I want to look at this plugin called Spiff. They reached out to me because they saw that I was doing. Um, they saw that I was a huge fan of Soothe. If any of you guys have ever seen Soothe too, it's like the automatic sort of uh, what would you call it? The automatic EQ basically. And it, what it's doing is it's using all this, uh, all these algorithms under the hood to pull out resonant frequencies without destroying the overall sense of sound. So they've also got this plugin. How do you pronounce this? Oak Sound. It's it's here. But anyway, I'm going to call them Oak Sound for now. Anyway, so this is Spiff, right? And a lot of people don't actually know about this one. And this is by far the most powerful transient engine I've ever used. And I'll show you. I'll just show you what it can do. And it speaks for itself. And it works exactly the same way as Soothe. So what you have here is you have your like EQ looking grid. And then what you do is you basically add more to what in the frequency range you want it to do something. So if you're boosting, you're going to be boosting the frequencies in here. And if you're in cut mode, it's going to cut the transients that are in there. Okay, so this is just for transients. So without it on, we're listening to this guitar right now, which is doing the... Uh, the uh, muted muted guitar part. So let's have a listen. So you can see where my transients are. So if we boost this, and as you can see, because it's like an EQ, I can most EQ, most transient designers will just give you attack and they'll give you release, or they'll give you uh, like a uh, almost like a multi-band compressor. They'll give you a range in which you can sort of add the transient or take it away, right? What I love about this is you get multiple bands with which to do it. And also you get to control the cue of that band. So as you can hear, I can have a wide uh, a wide band here and you listen, it's got a lot of the high ticky sound from the guitar, or I can really focus it in on a particular transient I may want to boost. And then the best bit about this is you sort of think it about, you think of it like how much of this effect do I want to add to this sound? So as you hear, I've got like a transient here. Let's say I like that particularly woody 4K. And then this is almost like a volume dial, like how much of that transient do I want? But on the flip side, let's say that in this track particular, I like the rhythm of the guitar, but I don't want it to be as pokey. I don't want it to be as transienty. We can do the opposite. So let me try the cut. Most of the transients are like up here. Now, if I turn this off and on, you'll hear the difference. So it's still got that feeling of the transients, but without that actual energy, without that on the top, without the actual transient. And that's going extreme. So we can bring some of it back in. So it's a bit more natural. If I bring it down, you'll hear all that tss tss come back in. And then what you can do is listen to it in the mix and then sort of balance the transients how it feels right. So here... So here you can hear, I'm not even doing that much to it now. And if I turn it off and on, you'll hear all I'm really taking out is the tick, 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 which if you want it to be particularly rhythmic, you would keep in because transients always sort of indicate the pulse. But when you're doing something like this, where you want to sort of roll back some of those transients so it's not distracting because it's not an action cue. You don't need every transient on it. You can sort of smooth them off so that they fit better. I'll just bypass it so you can hear the difference. And 
if I do a really extreme version so you can hear the difference there. So with this one, I'm just going to pull it back to like here because I actually really like what it's doing. And of course, you can get in and adjust the sensitivity and things like that just down below. We'll do a little demo of that. Hang on. And then you have the decay. So just how long it's basically holding on to it. So if you do it, if you do the decay slow, basically it's like the release on a compressor. It's just going to let it all come back slowly. So as soon as it gets rid of that transient, it's going to turn it down and not come back immediately. But you can make it faster. So you see there's a good balance because then I get a little bit of the click. But it's just holding the tone back enough. And of course we can change the sharpness. So when, when uh, you use the sharpness, the way I've always understood it is it's basically how specific the frequencies are. So the wider it is, if you look, it's sort of doing the whole band. Whereas if you go sharp, you get the very specific frequencies. it half in but most of these like of course you can do like mid side and stereo so like for example if uh, you wanted to i never really do this to be honest but like so on the mid side channels i'm not i don't even use it so i'm not even sure how this one works but in mid side i could tell you the basic uh wait, balance mid side sides only mid side. okay so what you could do is uh with mid side, what you could do is you could, for example, take the transients out of the middle, but not out of the stereo track. Or let's say, for example, you didn't want all the ticky ticks in the side channels. You could get rid of it there. So it was only in the mono channel. But I never do that because I just like to do it left and right. When it comes to transients, I like to treat them equally. But the option is there should you want to use it. But I definitely wanted to just quickly show you guys how this one worked because it's like Soothe. It's one of my favorites. Uh, it's my go-to for transient designers now, and I've been meaning to show it to you for a while. So anyway, just wanted to take a minute to show you guys that 